2018, Republican Ohio Congressman Brad Wenstrup. Doctor, welcome back to the program. Tell us more about your findings. Well, it was interesting because the intelligence community put out an updated assessment on origins of COVID, whether it's zoonotic, came from a wet market, came from the lab, but it was very, very inconclusive in my mind or incomplete. And let me just start with one of their final assessments was they said they were in broad agreement that COVID was not developed as a bioweapon. Well, that can be an opinion. One of the things that they left out, that which normally you see in an intelligence report of some type, is their level of confidence in that assessment. For that particular assessment, they did not give a level of confidence as they did for the others, such as whether it came from the wet market, et cetera. But more importantly, we don't know who is making this assessment. I mean, really, for all we know, they talked to three dentists about this. I, we just don't know. And we've asked that question and we get no answer. And we want to know one, but what basis did you all come to this broad agreement? But more importantly, as you read in our statement there that you had on there, I appreciate that, is some of the things that were just out there that we know and seem to be ignored and don't seem to be part of the equation within the intelligence community, and I don't know why. First of all, we know that China has their Academy of Military Medical Science, and within that, they have what's called the Fifth Institute, which is associated with the Wuhan Institute of Virology as far as the science and the research. Even in 2005, our own State Department said that China is working on offensive bioweapons and they're doing research as such. In 2015, they actually, the Academy came out with a book questioning the natural findings and beginnings of the original SARS virus. But they also, the title of the book included human viruses as a genetic weapon. Also in 2015, it's published report between Ralph Barrick in North Carolina and Dr. Xi Zengli in China that they have developed a chimera or where you take two viruses and take parts of one, put it on the other, and now you've created a new virus. And in many cases, what we call gain of function research, it would be to make it more infectious. In 2014, Dr. Fauci was, was stating that he was for this type of research. I believe his theory was that if we can make a virus super infectious and create a vaccine, maybe there's nothing we can't stop if, if it were to arise in nature. I don't know. He needs to answer those types of questions. Yes. Let me ask let me ask you this because we don't have a lot of time. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you know, we've been talking about account accountability uh, for years now and you know, we we haven't seen any action taken. You know, if we find that COVID-19 did in fact originate from one of their bioweapons programs, what actions should be taken? Well, I think there should be a world condemnation of it, but actually not only condemnation because but we need to get to the honest portion of it. You know, was it just a lab leak? Was it intentional? Was it unintentional? Uh, if it indeed right. came from the lab. We don't have the smoking gun, but we want to investigate all the evidence and we need some honest answers. So we have a lot of people that we want to talk to. And in the last several years, <clears throat> under Democrat control, nobody's been asked questions. Nobody's been called in to answer questions about this and the origins of COVID. It is important. I know in the Democrats report that they came out with, they felt that we shouldn't even try to find the origins of COVID. I would disagree with that, especially as a physician, because it can be a change in what we fund. It can be a change in how lab security is carried out. It can be a change in early detection and treatment, and certainly our concerns for national security and national health security if this is indeed a bioweapon that they're carrying. Well, Congressman, we appreciate the work that you're doing. Uh, we'll continue to hold all of you in Washington accountable and look forward to having you back here uh, to update us on your findings. Congressman and Dr. Brad Wenstrup, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.